I'm Marina Taylor. I'm the director of the Office of the Director General of Programs of the Council of Europe. It's a complicated name for uh, a unit in the Council of Europe that is responsible for the programming, the decentralized implementation and resource mobilization of technical cooperation and assistance activities. The European Union is our most important partner for cooperation and technical assistance, both in Member States, Council of Europe Member States, and beyond. And the programmatic cooperation framework is a new uh, multi-annual, multi-country program which allows us to plan and target very precisely the areas where we wish to intervene together. The Council of Europe and the European Union share, of course, basic values with regard to human rights, the rule of law and democratic governance. And many years ago already we have decided to work together in those areas to help member states to respect the commitments that they have undertaken when joining the Council of Europe. I would also like to mention that it is a very financially very important program. Some 35 million euros go into the six countries of the Eastern Partnership. So five of those countries are member states of the Council of Europe. So this is a very important program for us. Uh, the areas we are working in are promoting and protecting human rights, uh, uh, ensuring justice, combating threats to the rule of law, addressing challenges of the information society and democratic governance. And in these areas we carry, so these are the overall themes, and in these areas we carry out very specific projects in the six countries that participate in the programme. Why is it useful to work with six countries together on a regional basis rather than just countries on their own? Well, in fact, most of the projects are country specific within those five areas, but the countries also have a lot in common, of course, in the way in which they approach uh, their reform needs. And uh, regional cooperation allows us to exchange best practice between the countries themselves so that they do not just learn but they can also give, they can also exchange and show what progress they have made and can benefit from each other's experience. And how is this going to affect the, the daily lives of people in those countries? Well, very much so, because the projects are very, very specific, very concrete. So, uh, to give you an example, if we work with the Ombudsman in Ukraine on how to better advocate against discrimination in Ukraine, it has a direct impact on Ukrainians. Or if we work for example in Armenia with higher education institutions on corruption in higher education. It has a direct impact on students getting a fair deal when they go to university. If we work on penitentiary reform, this has a direct impact on the health and well-being of prisoners, for example, and on their ability to be reintegrated into society. If we work with the judiciary, it has a direct impact for people that they have to do, that they will be dealt with by a non-corrupt or less corrupt judiciary than before. So I think there is a lot of direct impact for the population, although it's not always visible from the names of the projects. The program has started, we're at the end of the first year now. So at the moment we're still in a phase where we have a lot of output and the impact is only beginning to show. But uh, we've run in this first year over 400 activities in the six countries. We have uh, trained, for example, over 17,000 people in domestic election observation. Elections are also one of the areas we're working in. So there is a, a lot of things going on and many of them are really directly impacting the lives of people. And how long will this cooperation continue for? And, and how can you make sure that the results are sustainable, that they, people feel the effects in the long term? The programme is uh, planned in principle for six years with two or three year phases and then evaluation after the first three years. So because we actually we also monitor the implementation constantly anyway, but there will be a midterm evaluation to fine tune perhaps what may need to be fine tuned and to assess how this cooperation works. Uh, with regard to sustainability, I think that is one of the most important uh, aspects actually of technical cooperation because if the results are not sustainable, it's hardly worth trying to achieve them. We try to ensure sustainability through a number of uh, measures. First and most importantly, an absolute buy-in by the beneficiaries, by the countries in question, where we work not only with the government but also with parliaments, with local governments, with civil society 
because the Council of Europe itself also is a multi-institutional organization. So this way we can already ensure that there's not just a one-track but a multi-track approach to every individual issue. Uh, also capacity building plays a very important role so that people actually develop the, 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 the ability to maintain the level of results. But thirdly and, and most obviously where for example, legal changes or legal reform are necessary. This is written on paper, this remains. So, of course, uh, sustainability is always an issue which needs to be taken into account. But, uh, but we do from the very, very start of designing a project until the end.